Okay, um, now for the calculus of polar. Not one of my favorite things. Um, okay, it says, first thing, it says, find the area inside of r equals 2 plus 2 sine of theta. Well, we need to know what that looks like. So, 2 plus 2 sine of theta. Um, here's our little cheat sheet for now. Uh, eventually, we need to memorize the majority of this. I see this as a 2 plus 2 sine of theta here, where a and b divide together to give us 1. So it's going to be a cardioid. It's going to be heart-shaped. Because it is sine, sine deals with the y, it's going to be oriented up and down. Okay, so I'm going to do a little rough sketch. And what I always do is I make me a little, instead of an x, y chart, I make a little theta r chart. And I just use my quadrantal angles. Okay. If I fill in a zero, sine of zero is zero, times two is zero, plus two is two. So at zero, it's going to go out two. Pi over two, two plus two sine of pi over two. Well, sine of pi over two is one, so it would be two plus one. I mean, two plus one times two, which is four. So one, two, three, four. Pi. Um, sine of pi is zero again, so it's going to be two. One, two. Okay, three pi over two. Sine of three pi over two is a negative one. Times two is negative two, plus two is zero. So it's going to be like this. Well, I know it's heart-shaped. Um, well, let's go ahead and, and do two pi. Um, zero, it's back to two. So I'm back to where I started from. So it's going to look like this. Okay. To find the area inside of a polar curve, um, do you remember when we found areas under curves, we did um, basically it was just rect we, rectangles, Riemann sums. Well, this, think of it like a little magic windshield wiper that just kind of goes around. And what I'm doing, this is my radius is I'm forming a bunch of sectors and it just spins around until it gets back to where it started. Um, and if you look at one little sector, the area of a sector is one half r squared theta. Well, this is one half r squared d theta because it's the change in theta from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. And I'm summing it from my first theta, these are always thetas, to my last theta. So it's going to be the integral from where I started, I started at zero, to how long it took me to get all the way back around to where I started from, two pi. That's the hardest part is finding the limits of one half. My r is my radius, r. squared d theta. So if you remember the area of a sector formula from pre-calculus is a equals one half r squared theta. That's how you can remember um, the area of a polar curve. Um, and I just stick this directly into my calculator and it's just 18.8496. Um, if you want to prove this to yourself, to graph these in polar, especially at first to check your graphs, I'm just going to go add a graph screen. I go to menu, I go to graph entry, and I change it to polar. Um, and I just do 2 plus 2 sine of theta. And there it is. It's not a bad... Okay, theirs looks much better than mine. Just pretend that I did a great job. Um, and that's the end of the example 7.